it's time for that epitome of chocolate cake, a rich chocolate mousse cake with a chocolate glaze. This is something every pastry chef takes pride in. Start with measuring half a cup of boiling water. And I have here two ounces of unsweetened chocolate as well as a quarter cup of unsalted butter. And I'm gonna pour the water over top to melt the chocolate and butter. It makes a bit of a grainy paste. You don't expect it to be smooth, sumptuous chocolate. So I'll let this sit, grab an egg, crack that into my mixing bowl, and add to that half a cup of sugar and just a teaspoon of vanilla. I'm creating a chocolate sponge cake. It's still rich and moist and a little bit dense. I'll whip this up until it's nice and frothy. It's pale and thick and doubled in volume. So now I can add my chocolate butter mixture. You have to expect that this cake batter is very wet when you mix it up. And now I'll just sift the dry ingredients directly over top. A cup and a quarter of all-purpose flour and a teaspoon of baking powder and three quarters of a teaspoon of the baking soda. And just a touch of salt I'll just sift that right in. So you can tell it's gonna be a light and fluffy batter. The last addition, going back to that devil's food cake recipe, a half a cup of hot, strong coffee. That devil's food cake is the base from which all chocolate cakes come from. Now, this recipe makes two eight-inch cakes. I'm only going to use one of these layers in my chocolate mousse cake. The other, I'll save for something special. I've preheated the oven to 325, and these cakes will take about 25 minutes to bake. And while those bake, I can start on the rich chocolate mousse. I bring a cup and a half of whipping cream up to a full simmer, pour the cream directly on top of 12 ounces, this time of bittersweet chocolate. Because I'm folding in whipped cream, I want that intensity of a bittersweet chocolate. I can just gently stir and make that beautiful ganache. The next task I want to start is actually cooking sugar and pouring it into egg yolks, and that's the base for the mousse. I'll measure half a cup of sugar into a pot and a third of a cup of water, and I want to cook that using a candy thermometer to measure until it reaches 250 degrees. While that's cooking up, I'll separate three eggs, keeping the yolks and just whipping them a little bit just to soften them up. You need to get them loosened up before you add that boiling sugar. All right, now that it's reached 250, I'll turn the mixer on high and slowly add the boiled sugar by pouring it down the side of the bowl. I whip this egg yolk and sugar combination until it cools down a little bit. Pour all the ganache in. And just give it a stir to blend it together. Nice. Now it's still just above body temperature. It has to cool completely to room temperature before I fold in the whipped cream. All right. Now, to check the doneness of this cake, a sponge cake you can tell is done when it springs back when you touch it. I have a cooled cake layer here so you can see how short it is, but we want those thin, delicate sponge layers hiding between the rich chocolate mousse. So now I can fold in one and a half cups of whipped cream. The original sponge cake I made fit into an eight inch pan. When it comes to assembling the cake itself, I'm going to layer the mousse and the cake in a nine inch pan. I like to use a spring form pan, that way I can unlatch it and reveal the cake easily. And I slice the cake in half horizontally. It's a good idea to make use of that cake wheel. I'm gonna pour half of the mousse in the bottom of the pan. I place one of these cake layers gently on top. Then the remaining half of the mousse hides that cake layer. The remaining layer of cake gets placed right on top. I give it a good four to six hours in the freezer to set up that mousse. And here's a cake I already made and fully froze. How do you get it out of the springform pan? 
A hair dryer, of course. When you see the frost disappear on the side of the pan, that's your sign that it's just warmed enough. There we go. To flip it upside down. Lift off the top. And the finishing touch for this ultimate of chocolate cakes, a chocolate glaze. And at this point, you chill it until you're ready to serve it. A work of perfection. Cut into it to reveal the beautiful light sponge cake and the mousse layers underneath. Light and fluffy, yet rich and fulfilling. Thanks for watching Oh Yum! Keep